President Obama has completed his plan to cut global warming pollution from power plants. We look at the top five takeaways for the clean energy sector in this episode of Rewired from Green Tech Media. I'm Julia Piper. Today, after working with states and cities and power companies, the EPA is setting the first ever nationwide standards to end the limitless dumping of carbon pollution from power plants. In early August, President Obama unveiled the Clean Power Plan. It's a new rule crafted by the Environmental Protection Agency designed to cut greenhouse gas emissions from power plants 32% by 2030, compared to 2005 levels. It's not a one-size-fits-all, though. It's meant to be flexible and gives states the ability to make their own plans to meet the targets. There are many ways to do this. States can switch from coal-fired power to natural gas. They can set up programs to boost efficiency, enact cap-and-trade systems, and increase the adoption of renewables. So what does all this new activity really mean for the clean tech industry? We sat down to discuss five major takeaways with Malcolm Wolf, a senior policy expert at Advanced Energy Economy. First, says Wolf, the clean power plan sends a strong market signal to businesses and investors through 2030. The clean power plan definitely helps lock in continued growth for the advanced energy sector. This is a industry that many people think uh, may be small. It's actually a $200 billion industry already. It grew 14% over uh, 2014, over 2013. That's five times faster than the U.S. economy. The Clean Power Plan locks in that growth. The Clean Power Plan is expected to trigger the retirement of some 50 gigawatts of coal. But it's hard to know exactly what mix of clean technologies will be used to replace it. That's because states don't have to submit plans for how they'll reduce emissions until 2018. And they don't have to start making cuts until 2022, which is the second important takeaway. The plan creates an incentive program to reward states that take early action. It allows states to start counting renewable energy projects and efficiency projects in low-income communities toward their final goals in 2020 and 2021. But Wolf says the early incentives don't kick in soon enough and could delay action today. So it's a great long-term market signal, doesn't do much in the short term, may actually disrupt markets by encouraging folks to wait a few years. So the Clean Power Plan may not cause an immediate spike in clean energy deployments, but over time it will require states to take action. This leads to the third point. The plan will open up new markets for projects, but it will also raise complex regulatory and political questions. Things like efficiency in rooftop solar reduce electricity sales, which has already created resistance from utilities and sparked political battles in several states. Wolf says these battles are unlikely to end anytime soon. The fixed charges and the net metering uh, debate with solar, I think, are going to increasingly be the large issue for the electricity industry. Uh, from my perspective, they're really a symptom of the evolving business model. Uh, and utilities are going to increasingly get less and less of their revenues from volumetric sales and more from providing a service. And this is an evolution of the system that we've got to go through. States are also going to feel growing pains. Under the final rule, coal-heavy states like Montana, West Virginia, and North Dakota will have to make pretty steep emissions cuts. That's one reason why 15 states have already launched a lawsuit against the EPA, claiming the agency has overstepped its authority. But many of the states challenging the Clean Power Plan won't necessarily have a hard time complying. It's more of a political challenge than a practical one, says Wolf. If you look at the states that have announced that they're going to sue, some of those states are really in very good shape to comply. Uh, and the lawsuits seem to be much more ideological, much more based on whether you believe that climate is real or man-made, and far less based on the state's actual impact and the cost of compliance. The fifth and final point to consider is whether or not Congress will renew federal incentives for wind, fuel cells, and solar. Incentives make these technologies cheaper to buy, which is especially helpful for states that have big emissions cuts to make. If the solar investment tax credit steps down in 2017 as scheduled, GTM Research expects there to be a sharp drop in solar project deployments. I think there's a argument now that since the Clean Power Plan early action doesn't kick in until 2020, that there should be a bridge, that the IPC should be extended from 2016 till at least 2020 so that the technologies don't fall off a cliff and then you expect them to be back ready in 2020 as an early action compliance mechanism. So while the Clean Power Plan will end the limitless dumping of carbon pollution from power companies, as President Obama says, 
it doesn't guarantee a thriving clean energy market, at least not immediately. But longer term, assuming it survives political and legal challenges, the rule will be a huge market driver for advanced energy companies. This is Rewired, I'm Julia Piper, thanks for watching.